What happened in Episode 8 of Westworld Season 2? What did we learn about the Ghost Nation, and what might happen next? Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. This video is brought to you with the support of Amino. Amino is a free-to-download app that provides a home for literally thousands of communities. I, along with thousands of others, am an active member of both the Westworld one and the Game of Thrones one. I'm sure I'll be joining some more soon too. Both communities have chat rooms, theories and articles, and I try to post all my videos up there, as I know many other content creators do too, and stay active in the chat rooms. If you join the community, then do feel free to say hi to me there. My username there, as here, is IndeepGeek. I also upload links to all my Westworld live streams onto the Westworld Amino, so if you want to see my pre-show live stream for episode 9, you'll find me there at 5pm Eastern Time on Sunday. Let me start by saying that I loved this episode. It is a laudable feat for the showrunners to take us away from the main storyline so close to the end of the season, and still manage to make us look at the events of this season and last with a completely new understanding. The Ghost Nation and their motivations have been a mystery not just in this season of Westworld, of course, but throughout season one. The main character here, Akechita, is one of the very first hosts. We saw him back in episode 2, leading the sales pitch to Logan out in the real world over three decades ago, and here he is being described as an Alpha 2 model. Not quite as original as Dolores, perhaps, but still predating the park. And it seems that before the park was open, and before Arnold died, he and his tribe were living in what appears to be peaceful, idyllic circumstances. But this changes when he investigates gunshots coming from Escalante. He discovers the aftermath of Wyatt's rampage and Arnold being killed. But he has seen death many times, and it is not that that captures his attention. It's the maze, Arnold's child's toy that he used as a metaphor and help for Dolores to gain self-awareness. And although that massacre marked the stalling of Dolores' development until much later, it touchingly started Akechita on that very same path, and he, unlike Dolores, seemed to achieve it largely on his own. Sometime after that, he and the rest of the Ghost Nation get narrative updates that turn them into savages pillaging across the land with scary face paint and so on, this was surely an attempt to make the place more cowboys and Indians for the guests. And incidentally, I think this is a subtle critique of what the guests wanted. It's noticeable that the visitors to the park were overwhelmingly western and white and more often male than female. And two of the three parks we know of, Westworld and the Raj, are based on times when western powers were subjugating and colonising others. This is a lot easier to justify to yourself if the others are painted as murderous savages rather than peaceful communities at one with nature. Westworld is a liberation story on many levels. Anyway, what follows is a series of incidents that help Akechita even further down his path of self-awareness to a sense of destiny that seems to be guiding the Ghost Nation's actions in Season 2, he encounters Logan in pretty bad shape after the events of Season 1, and perhaps the mental damage he took here is actually the start of the apparent descent into substance abuse we saw earlier in the season. But what Akechita takes from this encounter is the notion that this is the wrong world. He sees the valley beyond just before it is covered over, and probably rightly concludes that the door he sees there could take them to another world. That door looks very similar to the door we see the man in black striding towards in the pre-season trailer, which is yet more evidence that all of the storylines in this season will be focusing in on this one place for the season finale. He sees his wife taken from him and replaced, at first he is the only one in the tribe who realises what is going on, but soon someone else does. It's probably no coincidence that they talk about the village being full of ghosts, hosts who have been replaced, the ghost nation. And he gets himself killed, 
like Maeve did last season, in an effort to find his lost wife. He does find her in cold storage. It speaks volumes about his selfless character that the pain he feels in his loss doesn't lead to violence or hate, but a great empathy for all the other hosts who have also lost their loved ones. As an aside here, he will not know this, but there's a chance that his wife is actually on Westworld right now. The hosts in Cold Storage were the ones that Ford used for the ambush at the gala. Clementine, for example, and Abernathy. So she might have been part of that group as well. Regardless of what was going on there, though, Akechita then devoted himself to waking the other members of the Ghost Nation and other hosts he comes into contact with. His primary tool here was the maze symbol that Ford decided didn't work, but perhaps in the light of what we know now about how Bernard came about, we can hazard a guess that it didn't work because Arnold decided on what it meant and tried to get Dolores to understand it. But what was really needed was for her to hear her own voice and decide what it meant for her. So, a Akechitur goes out into Westworld and puts the symbol all over the place, under scalps, ploughed into fields, and so on. Which makes us realise that the man in black was even more wrong than we had thought last season in trying to follow the maze. The signs he saw dotted around the park were not only not for him, but they weren't by who he thought they were by either, Arnold. They were done by a Akechitur for other hosts. Which brings us to the man in black. One host who Akechita had become attached to was Maeve's daughter. She had helped him once when he was at death's door and he swore to protect her. But he couldn't protect her against the man in black. So when he finds him lying bleeding after being shot so many times last episode, he wants him to suffer. He only lets him go when Emily promises to make him hurt much, much more. We shouldn't necessarily take her exactly at her word here, but it's worth pausing to note how far the Man in Black has fallen in just one week. From being almost untouchable last season, he's now been Ford's plaything in the game. Hurt badly by Maeve, dragged around by the Ghost Nation, and now slung over the back of a horse by his own daughter, after a discussion about who will hurt him the most. His sins do seem to be catching up with him, and his redemption is clearly not yet at hand. The idea that he doesn't deserve to die is an intriguing one, though, because that's obviously what Delos had been trying to do, grant immortality, something he said he didn't want. Would him being given an immortality of suffering be poetic justice for all the suffering he caused? The thought must have crossed Emily's mind, or indeed Ford's. But Akechitur now is wanting to guide his people and others that he has gathered to the real world, a place where their memories will be safe. This is the real host exodus from Westworld, not Dolores's ever-shrinking army. But where in all of this was Ford? The one scene we see of him talking to Akechita seems to suggest that he largely left the Ghost Nation alone, allowing them to develop their own free will and then just giving them a little heads up about when the time would be right for them to leave the park. But this clearly underplays the subtleties of how Ford manipulates events. There is much talk in this episode of Akechita's original programming to maintain the honour of his tribe, his inquisitiveness, his care for others and so on. Ford watched Akechita and the Ghost Nation all through their history, and he will have known what Akechita would be likely to do at every stage if he just made sure he saw the right things. Akechita had free will, but one could also argue that Ford designed him to do the things he did, so did he have complete independence? It's the kind of thing that theologians have been arguing about for centuries. Let's talk about Maeve's daughter for a second. What is apparent that wasn't before is that she does remember Maeve. She remembers all her old memories, including a Akechita looking after her and what the man in black did to her. She is, rather unexpectedly perhaps, another woke host. 
we're starting to learn that there are quite a few self-aware hosts dotted around. At the start of the season, we knew of just three, Maeve, Dolores and Bernard, but we learned last episode that Lawrence was, and Akane in Shogun World seemed to be there or thereabouts, and now there's Maeve's daughter, and Akechita, and the rest of the Ghost Nation. There are probably more we don't know about. And Maeve herself, lying at death's door in the Mesa Hub, unlocks another power. She can use the mesh network to talk to other hosts, not just command them, and Akechita promises to her that he will protect her daughter until she can return to them, if she can. I don't think there's any disputing that she will escape her current predicament, but the question is how. Elsie is still in the Mesa Hub, as is Bernard, but her best hope does seem to be Lee. He does seem to be genuinely sorry that his calling in Delos support separated her from her daughter. I've talked before about the Man in Black's redemption arc, but Lee seems to be on one too. All of which sets things up nicely for the finale over the next two episodes. We've already noted that everyone seems to be descending on the valley beyond. Dolores and Teddy, Bernard and Elsie, the Ghost Nation, probably Emily and the Man in Black, and when she escapes, Maeve as well. But what we're seeing now is where the lines of conflict will be. Dolores wants to use what's there as a weapon, and the Man in Black wants to destroy it. The Ghost Nation want to get there before Dolores ends us all, in Akechita's words, and we've already seen Dolores shoot a member of the Ghost Nation because she thought he wasn't worthy. Maeve won't let anyone get between her and her daughter, and of course, Ford is there inside Bernard, stage-managing everything. For most, it will probably start with a search for the door that Akechita saw. He saw it as a passage between two worlds, which actually adds a possible layer of meaning to the puzzle Ford set the man in black about the game he's put him on, that it begins where he ends and ends where he began. If this is about a door between two worlds, the man in black started the game in Westworld, so that's where he will end. Finally, it would be remiss not to show this shot of what looks like it's the mostly complete structure that William was bragging about to Dolores earlier in the season. What he calls a thing of wonder, and she calls a weapon. Unfortunately, it's not very clear from the outside what it is, and it now all seems to be underground. But what do you think it looks like? Feel free to speculate wildly in the comment section. If you're enjoying my Westworld content, you may also like my Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire videos. Please do check them out on my channel page. And do subscribe here if you enjoyed this video. As I said, please do also check out my Patreon page if you're interested in supporting me make more videos like this, or if you want to access some exclusive audio content. Thanks for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.